So welcome, you guys, to uh, call number whatever this is, uh, featuring awesomeness Katie Rubin. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Hi. How does it get better than all of us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure that it does, so I don't ask that. <laughs> it's a fair point. It's a fair point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I'm just really glad you're here. And this is a really informal, like, conversation about writing, creativity, wherever we want to start. So... So where would we like to start? So would you tell us a little bit about you in a nutshell? And sure. Yeah. Should, I, should I talk about me in the context of writing? Maybe just talk about you, who you are, what brings you here. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do the whole story from when I was a, oh, but in the womb. <laughs> I was an embryo at one point, And then I, yeah. So, okay. So, yes. In other words, like you have people on this call who don't know me at all. Is that That's correct? Exactly. Okay, cool. So I am a person. And I am a stand-up comedian. I do um, stand-up comedy about consciousness. So I do, um, I call myself a conscious comedian. And what that means to me is I like to teach people about transformation and healing and becoming who they truly be and judgment and wellness and aliveness and being authentic all while being hilarious um, on stage. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. And uh, I've been doing that a long time. I, um, I also have four solo shows, solo theater pieces, meaning it's an entire play uh, with many, many characters from 10 to 15 characters, but I, I perform all of the characters. So I did that for 15 years before I did stand-up comedy. I actually, most stand-up comedians, it goes the other way. People write comedy and then they get tired of having to be funny all the time. So they write a solo show where it's like, I can be sad now. But I did a sad and serious first. <laughs> And now I <laughs> work my way backwards to stand up. Um, additionally, um, I have a master's degree in acting and I work a lot as a professional regional theater actress. So I play characters on stage a lot. I now have moved into directing at the regional theater level. I do that as well. And I have a thriving um, access consciousness facilitation and teaching business that seems to be becoming a big old thing now. Um, <laughs> so you don't, so you don't do much then just here and there. So I do a lot of napping and a lot of resting and I eat a lot of ice cream. I'm very pretty. So I just rely on my looks a lot. And <laughs> that's why I invited you here was your looks. So if you could just not talk and sit there, that would be great. <laughs> So I know that you just did a writing class, and so you may, yeah. this is actually maybe fresher in your awareness now than it might have been before, but can you talk a little bit about, well, and here, let me ask you about this, because you and I have been co-working together a little bit about on our different projects, you know, mm -hmm. so what is the process for you? Like, when you sit down to write something, like, is there a process? What is it? How would you talk about the writing process? And actually, actually, in terms of finishing a piece, because I find there's a lot of us that are like really great at just creating bits and pieces and nuggets and things like that. But when it comes to actually getting something done. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're all like not struggling, but like, how do you do that? What do you say to yourself? What do you create? Yeah. You know, that's yeah. sort of okay. That's, I love that question. Um, I like really practical stuff about writing, you know, probably a lot of you guys watching or listening today is, are there just four of you or is there more that I can't see? There, if you do your little arrow, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of us, I think. Oh, so I see. Seven. Oh, cool. With cool. You. Groovy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, so I was thinking uh, what first comes to mind is, um, I, you guys have probably heard of Anne Lamott. She writes great books and she writes books on writing. And there's a great book called Bird by Bird, which is a famous book about writing, which you, if you haven't read as a writer, I recommend it highly. It's short, it's easy, it's called Bird by Bird. And the, the phrase Bird by Bird refers to a conversation she had with her dad at one point where her dad was a writer and she wanted to become a writer. And she was like, how do you write a book, daddy? And he was like, you write it word by word by word. And she translated that to bird by bird somehow. I can't remember. But um, so I always think of her because she talks a lot about you just write the next word and then the next word and the next word. And when your head goes to when's it going to be done and what's the ending going to be and will, the, will they publish it and how the fuck am I going to produce this in America? You'd come back to what word you're on. It's, so it's the, same, it's the same stuff we all know from everywhere. It's Buddhism. It's access consciousness. It's everything. It's get present get present, get present, get present, and write. The other thing that I, I say about finishing things, books, writings, projects, is, 
and I, 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 I always knew this somehow m miraculously because awareness is an amazing thing. But um, then I had a teacher, I, it's like, I, you know when you know something and then you have a teacher and the teacher says it in a new way and you're like, that's the thing I know. I already knew that thing, but you were here to say the thing I already knew, thank you. <laughs> yes. um, I had a teacher who said, he said, how did he phrase it? He said, um, the best, the, the, the most useful tool for completing a writing project is a deadline. Who knew? Because the bottom line, for, I don't know about anybody on this call, but having written four hour and a half long solo shows, three stand-up comedy shows, which are like two hours each, three books, none of which are published, by the way. My plays are, but the books are not yet. And a ton of essays. I write newsletters for other people. I write them for myself. The only reason any of it ever gets done is because I already booked a show. And I better show up and say words. <laughs> I don't, I don't work well without a deadline. And now I know that some people are different. Like some people feel super pressured by deadlines and some people feel blah, 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 whatever they feel. I feel a ton of stuff about deadlines, but the key is to not get stuck in my feelings about the deadline and just meet the deadline. So I sometimes will create artificial deadlines. Like I'll have, I'll, I mean, I'll make all kinds of crazy shit up just so that there's a deadline in place. Because mm -hmm. again, there's no deadline, what's the fire under my ass to get it done? Now, there's a million fires under our ass. We want to be writers. We care about the planet. We want to contribute. But I don't know about you. I don't wake up in the morning super stoked about any of that shit. I wake up in the morning like, I told Michael Stevens and I would have it done by three, so I'm going to finish it. Yeah, and what I get out of that is like, you got to create whatever fucking works for you. You know, it's like, what works for you? Like, and I get, I get the same thing about myself. And as we're talking, I'm looking at, you know, my book that you and I have sat down to write a few times. And I've been like, yeah, yeah, you write. I got all this other stuff to do, yeah. you know, and the one time did write it and created a lot for me. And so I'm looking at that going, okay, so what deadline can I create for myself? Because sometimes I'll create a deadline for myself and I'll just roll right over it because I don't, there's no accountability. So knowing that about myself, what can I create with other people involved that would actually light the fire under my ass or, you know, provide me with whatever motivation or inspiration I need to, to actually create it. Yeah. And I, and I, I totally, and I, I feel like um, it's a little bit of that kind of like we talk in access a lot about this strong talk notion or like in other systems, they talk about tough love. It's like, sometimes the parent you need is the mom who's nurturing and is going to hug you and sing you a lullaby to sleep. But when you're trying to get a book done, sometimes you need mom and sometimes you need dad. And dad's the one who comes in and says, we got to go at 6 a.m. because we got to be there at 8 because the people are coming. And so it's like, you got to be present enough with you to, to get like, okay, what do I require right now? What does my body need? What do my consciousness need? So that you, and then you got to be real with yourself, which is where most people stop themselves. What I find with creative projects is people don't be real with themselves. They're like, we have a thousand la la magical stories we live in that keep us from just getting grounded and getting a deadline and getting that shit done. Anyway. So what do you find that that contributes to the creative product process? Cause as you were talking, you know, I was like, we do sort of go there with creativity. It's like, I gotta be inspired or I gotta be in the mood or so. Yeah. Yeah. When, do you know what I'm asking with that? Yeah. Me? Yeah, actually, yes, because, okay, and this brings me to another quote. If you haven't had a chance to look at Stephen King, actually, writes great books about writing. Yes, I checked. I have that. I've read, like, the first 15 page pages. It's already awesome. Yeah, and, like, by the way, I never read books all the way through, yeah. ever. <laughs> I'll, I'll read, like, six pages of it and be like, done. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> so, but what he says is, I mean, he and another, a bunch of other writers, but he's a big proponent of, like, it, the notion of needing inspiration is a bunch of happy horseshit. Because the people you know who are writing prolifically, like a lot of words that are being paid for doing so, they just write. They just write, they just write, they just write. And they use whatever manipulations they have to use on themselves to get the writing done. Jerry Seinfeld said, I write a page a day, a page of jokes a day, no matter how I feel, no matter what's happening with the weather, no matter how sick my mother is, I write a page of jokes a day. And he's Jerry fucking Seinfeld. So he's like kind of knows some stuff. In terms of your question, like, what does it create or do to the creative process? 
for me, okay, this is what it does for me. I'm glad you asked that because I just, mm -hmm. it's fun to put it in words. Yeah. I, I think, this is my theory, because as writers, we're so out here, like we're so connected to these other realms. And this is the gift of being a writer is that you, you're connected up here a lot and out here. Being here in this body is not always top choice, priority, happy pants town. Like it's like we like to live in like we fantasy land because it's funner there, frankly, a lot of the time for me. Yeah. So what the deadline does and the, the just doing it no matter how I feel thing does is it, it forces me to pull that stuff from there down into my body and say it through my hands. And sometimes I'll have a, a set aside a three hour work fucking session, a writing session for three hours. I'm going to write for three hours. And I spent 40 minutes of it writing. And the rest of it was just trying to get to the place where I could write. Because writing so much of it, from my point of view, is pulling from these other realms that like sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do at Starbucks or in your own house or anywhere. So but it's the fact that I set the three hours aside and I got 40 minutes done that, you know, you and I just were working together and I'll yeah. share for the benefit of the group on, on a, I had 10 pages of something due to a theater that's going to be producing a thing. And I had to show them a solid 10 pages. And so the last chunk of it was where I really needed to like tighten it and hone it and get it. I just need to do some tightening. And so Crystal and I made a time where I was in Starbucks in Seattle and she was in, Vancouver at home and we talked on Skype or whatever we did and for that hour after we talked I was like I know that I'm here for this hour and these edits are happening now and they happened anyway so it's that whole thing of and I mean look I'm no I'm no I'm no Jerry Seinfeld yet and I'm no Stephen King but these people have insights for us and I try to apply them. No, yeah, but the, the other thing is that like all of us are not somebody until we are. So in what creates us being somebody is actually this constant showing up to the process of like, what do you desire to create? Well, for you, it's these, these shows right now. You know, what yeah. is it next? And, but it's that continual process of just showing up and then showing up again. And then what do I want to create now? Well, if it's a book, so what do I have to show up different to get that actually into the world? And a lot of people wait until they... A lot of people tell themselves, I don't know if anybody on this call can relate, <laughs> but a lot of people say like, until I'm a real writer, which happens when, exactly. I'm not going to commit to writing consistently. Newsflash, you become a real writer by writing consistently. <laughs> like, there's another saying that I like that writers say, they're like, writers are people who write. Yes. Not people who get published and not people who have written a lot. Writers are people who write. So if you're blocking uh, 20 minutes a month to write, you're a writer. You know, if you're blocking off an hour a day, you're a fucking ninja writer, you know, or whatever, whatever, you know, <laughs> but if you're writing, you're a writer. Yeah. I love that. I talk about that a lot. I, and um, does anybody have any questions? Like just jump in here at any time. Like we're just, we could probably just riff for the whole. <laughs> Um, I guess like what, what else would you have to say about this subject? It's like, where else could we go with this? Like, what are you aware of that if people could know about or. Okay. Yeah. Um, another thing that comes up is, is actually is, is the energy of judgment. Um, and like, I deal with this a lot myself when I sit down to write. Although I will tell you after like the more access stuff I've been doing, like the easier this is getting. And I'm so grateful for that. But it's like. I can sometimes sit down and I don't even know that I'm being run by judgment, but I'm being run by judgment of myself and of my writing and of writing in general and of creativity in general. I had a, a, a writing teacher once who said she was a writer and I was at some workshop. I can't remember who she is, but she gave me this uh, tool that I still use. She goes, when you sit down to write, the first thing you write is a list of everything on your mind without editorializing. So you make literally a bullet point list because bullet point lists don't freak the brain out. If, if you tell your brain, I got to write sentences and paragraphs and it has to make sense. <laughs> now where you're writing and uh oh, you're writing now. So you're all fucked up about it because we all have so many points of view about writing and what writing means. 
So she goes, just make a bullet pointed list. That's everything in your brain, including all your judgments about why you can't write and why you shouldn't even bother and why this is a fool's errand and why there isn't enough time and why it's already been said by everybody else mm. and why you're too fat and too old to say it or whatever you got. And then she says she also makes a list of like, later, you know, go to the grocery store. Oh yeah, I got to buy yams, the party next week. Like everything that's on your mind, make the list of it. And in making that list, I find, and sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't, sometimes just acknowledging the energy of the list does this for me. But it's like, by making the list, you're, now you're, you're starting to practice words from here going to here and you're letting judgment be part of what comes out rather than trying to resist your judgment and just be in this Zen like flow. Sometimes judgment needs to be articulated itself so that it doesn't own you anymore. You own it. So if you go like, I'm a big fat failure and there's no time and I'm never going to finish and I'm never going to get there already. I feel lighter just writing it. Then if you guys are using the tools of access, you can take it to another level and pot and pock all that shit. And then how much space would you be and how much easier would it be to just get in there? Um, so I, I, I feel like the, the judgment thing, and you've helped me a lot with this recently, Crystal, too, is this notion of like, and we've all heard this a million times, but like what you resist persists. Yeah. So it's like, what judgments do you have of your writing or of what writing is that you've made real and that you're allowing to stop you from writing? And that is where you destroy and uncreate it. Yep. You know, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. And it's like, it, I find that for myself, we can do a general clearing like that. But in the moment, it's so much more useful to be like, okay, right this second, I believe, blah, blah, bullshit. And then interesting point of view it or pod and pocket. <laughs> I love that tool. <laughs> oh my God, girl, my last 24 hours. <laughs> high five. High five. <laughs> Those of you that aren't in this loop, we just had a session last night and I was like, you use interesting point of view like a fiend. That's your home play. <laughs> and for those of you, if you got anybody's watching this in the future, like interesting point of, point of view is an access tool that you use for any feeling, every thought, every emotion, and every point of view for three days or a year. And literally after three days, you'll feel like a walking, talking meditation because there's so many goddamn points of view that we pick up on, we buy as real, that actually keep us from our own capacity and our own awareness. And that, that has to do with writing and life. Like, you know, anything that is you're desiring to create, your points of view create your reality. So if you're sitting down to write and you have the point of view that you, it's already been said, that's a good one. Like, it's already been said. Everybody's already done this. Like, what am I going to say that's any different? you know, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. And once that's out of the way, like what can actually show up when exactly what you said, like when you're not judging yourself anymore. Yeah. And it's funny too, how like, I don't, I don't know if this happens for you, but like how once I interesting point of view something, the thing that comes out of my mouth or my face or my fingers next is some other thing I wasn't even thinking of. Like my, I had a sponsor in the 12 step programs years ago who used to say, in your brain, you can think of this or that or maybe a third thing. And that's it. You're like, you know what's possible? What's possible is this thing or the opposite of it or some weird thing in the middle. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and then when you put, now there's a whole other thing you would say after that in 12 step, but from the access point of view, it's like then you would pot and pock the, your points of view about that and suddenly some 18 other things show up or some fifth dimensional energy shows up and you're like, I couldn't even see that before. Yeah, and this is what I talk about with people when I'm doing sessions is like when you let your brain control your mind, people are like, well, what good is my brain then? If it's, well, your brain's there to run your body. When you let it run your life or your writing, all you have is what it knows. Like that's, and it doesn't know everything. It's got the past, it's got that person's past, and it's got like this random possibility and that's it. So what yeah. you're talking about is like you get all that shit out of the way and then you can actually allow the universe, the energies or whatever to actually flood in and then there's just who knew that was going to come out of your mouth yeah who knew and it's like the thing that always comes out of my mouth becomes so much lighter yeah I hate I have a hard time admitting that not a hard time but like I'm like <laughs> I don't want to admit it because <laughs> frankly like I'm so used to writing from what's heavy and how many of us write stuff so like, much here's the serious terrible thing that occurred to my family in my life so and that's fun 
Well, and actually, I want to go there for a second because I had a lot of people say to me in this group and in my momentum group, like, how do you, I'm so used to creating from the trauma and drama. Like if the trauma and drama is gone, what do you create from? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What would you say about that? Yes. I love this question. We talked a lot about this in my last class. I just did, like you were saying, I did a six week class on learning to write stand-up solo shows or anything for the stage or not. And so like I had two novelists in there and then everybody else was doing solo shows or stand-up comedy. It was cool. But um, um, I have two things to say about that. One is, and what else is possible? One is I believe in telling the stories of trauma and drama if there's a transformational ending because like, let's take Dane here, for example, mm-hmm. okay? You, are you guys all in, are you guys all yeah, access? We are. Yeah, okay, cool. So we all know that Dane here has his story. Why? Because we've all heard it. Why? Because he's said it a thousand times, which is like, I used to be depressed and I wanted to kill myself and then I found access and then, now that's, we could say that's a trauma drama story or you can say it's a man who cleared his trauma drama story and now is telling you where he came from so that you have a frame of reference for what's possible. <laughs> So I believe that, like, why not tell the story of when your dad used to hit you with a brick every morning at 6 o'clock in the morning? Because if you've now come to the place of whatever about it, like, if there's, <laughs> if there's some journey or some arc such that you're not any more stuck in the, the, the pain of dad hit me with a brick, you can still tell the story of dad hit me with a brick because your aim is to enlighten and inspire and entertain other people. Now, sometimes the whole, (laughs) why that's so funny. That's so brutal. (laughs) Sometimes I think that the, um, the act, okay. So I'll use a specific example. I had a person in my class and I knew this. So I said it to her. I said, I wonder if you writing this trauma drama story that you're telling yourself you shouldn't write because it's trauma drama, if writing it is going to be the thing that starts to clear it for you. And that's what happened for her is she wrote it. And then it was like, there was no other way for her to get to the real nuggets of pain in her own body, except to put pen to paper for whatever reason. Then once she had done that, we cleared all the stuff she had around it, the charge around it, but that doesn't make the words she wrote down any less useful to someone else because yeah. there's somebody out there who got hit with a brick every morning at 6 a.m. who needs to hear, me too, you're not alone, and here's how I got out of it. Yeah, totally. I, and I'm so grateful you said that because I, I noticed when I, like, my story is so multifaceted. Like, I mean, I, I, I joke about it and say it leaves out everything but like child prostitution and cocaine, but everything else pretty much, you know, and, um, and so forever I've thought, you know, I need to write a book about this because it's so interesting. And, and so I get to this place in my life, I'm 40, I've got all these tools, I feel really free, like, I'm probably at the best place ever in my life to write a, a memoir. And I don't really have any interest in going there again, in that yeah. way. But yeah. the way I use my story now is as I'm moving through life and I'm creating, I have points I want to illustrate. And what I use my story for is, hey, this is where I was. This is where I got to. And this is what's, po- it's exactly what you said. It's, it's yeah. like three pieces. And I find that it, that's not getting stuck in the story. That's actually using my story to create a different reality. Yep, I agree. And, yeah. and, and, you know, some of us who have had these ideas about being writers, it's like, well, you know, once your points of view are not so firm about stuff, it's like, okay, do I actually want to be a writer? Like, <laughs> <laughs> do I care about that anymore? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, maybe you don't. Well, and I guess there's, there's another question. So it's like, if you're not drawing from, I, mean, I guess the second piece to this trauma drama thing is that a lot of my writing prior to Access came out of the angst that I would feel about things. Yeah. You know? And I, know I find that's, what you mean. yeah, I find that's true for a lot of us creative types. It's like, we're so emotional and dramatic and we let, there's a bit of that we like, you know, so it's, everything becomes really intense and, and there's a lot of great creative material that comes out of that, you know, all the songs on the radio and lots of whatever, blah, blah, blah. But once you get out of that and there isn't as much angst, like what do you begin to ask yourself? What, how do you, where do you go to create? 
Okay, this is great. When I was recently in India, I was just, I went to Shan, for those of you who don't know me, I went to the Shannon O'Hara's three day India class, body class, and we did all the body processes and it was awesome. And I, I asked her something in class to which she responded, okay, so why are you writing that show? And I said, because um, I think it will be fun for money, because they're going to pay me. And there's some other third thing. And she goes, yeah, what's the third thing? And I go, I don't know. And she goes, are you committed to being the change agent or something? You actually are. Are you committed to your, to your who you are, which is you are a transformational agent. So are you committed to that? And I was like, no. And then she was like, yeah, exactly. And so we cleared some shit there. And then I realized just from her asking me that, that the third thing was like, all I really care about talking about anymore. And frankly, for me, my whole life, all I've been interested in talking about is transformation and yes. what's possible. Yes. So now I'm writing my new show from what could I teach these people? What possibilities could I open for them in a hilarious, entertaining way, because I have these skills, right? Like I know how to play characters, I know how to be funny, and I nah, nah, nah. now, how do I use that to, to take it to the next level and be a change agent? So then as I'm writing, I'm going like, here's a tool, and here's a tool, and I'm teaching tools, but what's really cool is, like you just said, Crystal, I have all this life experience of everywhere I didn't have a tool, mm -hmm. so I get to, I'm telling these stories as I'm teaching the tools, and the stories are the example of where and when I used a tool and how, and then what it did for me. And, you know, some people, not everybody's interested in writing from that point of view of like, how is it going to contribute to the planet and what kind of transformational healing message is this play? Well, no. I get that. But I think what maybe the bigger question is that, that you basically said without saying the words is what is it that I desire to create on the planet? I mean, that's, yeah. that's the bigger question. It's like, well, kind of why am I here? But not from why am I yeah. here? It's like trying to find your purpose, but like, why are you here? Why'd you come here? What do you want to create? And I get that that's a, that is a bigger, and that's like a, a question for exploration. And one of the things I talk about all the time with writing is like, if you don't know what to write, write about where you are right now. You know, it's like, if you have no idea why you're here on the planet, but you'd like to explore it, fucking write about it. Go on some adventures that give you more information. Like tell, go cre do some origami, like do something that like gives you more information about you you know, to discover what that is for you that with that lights you up, that gets you up in the morning, you know, cause like, yeah. So yeah. that, to that point, yeah, I have this woman in class, the last class I did where she, her piece, I don't want to say it was the best piece, but it was the best piece. And it was, um, <laughs> it was everybody in the class's favorite piece. And the reason it was our favorite, first of all, she's an excellent writer and she was like lyrical and poetic and it was fucking and hilarious and genius. But the reason it was hilarious and genius was she was writing about the shit storm she's presently in the middle of yeah. without filters. So her, her thing was like, the opening sentence of it was, I think it was, sometimes I wish my kids would just die. <laughs> I hate the people I made. Sometimes I feel like, could the other shoe just drop already? <laughs> Because <laughs> trying to hold it all together is exhausting, and I need a fucking nap. But then she was like, you know, if I... Then she, like, finds out she has, like, a lump in her breast, and she's like, the doctor said I had a lump in my breast, and I was like, phew, nap time for mama. Like, <laughs> you know? Like, thank God. And then she's like, I'm going to eat all the casseroles I want, because I don't have to worry about losing this 30 pounds anymore. Fuck it. I'm going to die. Anyway, my point is like, it's not like an uplifting tale of love and ponies. But just by her articulating where she was honestly, it was so liberating for all of us. Because what is the thing nobody's willing to do on this planet is talk about where they are. Because we all have so much judgment about where we should be. 
which is why comedy can be such a healing agent, I find, is that with comedy, you're going, this is what it is right now, and fuck everybody. <laughs> and that's exactly what comedy is. Some of my favorite comedies take the daily life situations of exactly where they are and blow them right out of proportion into where you know they actually are. I'm like, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's hilarious because it's so fucking true. Yeah, I love that. It, I, I just, I see that all the time with people thinking like I should be here and I should be here. And there's this constant frustration of not being able to create because we're not there. But there is of no interest to us. What we want to know is what is it like for you here, right here, wherever you are, in whatever room you're in, in whatever moment you're in. And how can, and just sharing that, you know, and for you, it comes out as comedy. For some of us, you know, it comes out a little different, but who, that's what's so brilliant about all of us is we're all so fucking different. That's the thing. And nobody's going to say it the way you're going to say it. Yeah. So if you don't say it, it never gets said. I love that. How does it get better than that? So Nura had a question. She's like, um, <laughs> well, the first question was, what is this conscious comedy like? Funny and aware. <laughs> and any tips? <laughs> See her face? That's what it's like fucking funny um and any tips for showing up authentically you have me curious with your first few sentences so what is that like what is showing up authentically like what does that even mean to you okay cool um hmm. yeah well it, it it comes back to what we're just talking about just now which is the willingness to be where you are now so showing up authentically is where you go like um for example uh like okay we'll use this Today, okay, well, yesterday, I hated my boyfriend. Like, I hate him. I want him to die and not be on the planet. That is true. That's how I felt yesterday. Today, I hate him less. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. So, like, what's authentic is, is that. Now, what would be inauthentic is if I was like, you know, so my boyfriend and I had a fight. And, like, you know what I – it's like – we're all exactly where we're supposed to be. And like, you know, we have, he has this point of view and I have this point of view. And it's like one day, who knows, like maybe our points of view will come to a place where they, like, you know what I mean? People talk around shit. People aren't willing to just go like, right now you're an asshole and I hate you. It's just an example. Okay, that's one example. <laughs> one example. Um, Another example is like vulnerability. And this is an access thing, right? And it's a many systems thing. A lot of times people in access are like, access says, and I'm like, yeah, have you ever read Buddhism? Because Buddhism says that shit too. But anyway, uh, we get very- a whole other conversation. Uh, that is a whole other conversation. But anyway, so um, vulnerability, right? Like people, I often get the feedback that I'm so authentic or that I'm I'm so honest. People, people say that a lot. And, and, I, and I appreciate hearing it because I tend to not honor that about myself and not even know that that's a thing I'm doing. But um, what I've come to understand through people mirroring that back to me is that for me, the motivation to be authentic is nothing changes unless I'm authentic first. In other words, somehow very early on, I learned that if I don't admit what's occurring now, pretty ugly or otherwise, it's not going to change. So if I have the solution already figured out before I've even told you the problem, okay, where do you go from there? But if I'm in the energy of the problem, now we can move the energy of the problem. So there's no point. To me, it's a waste of time to not be authentic because where can you go from there? It's a lie. It's like, it's like building a building on a shitty foundation. You're like, my foundation's really pretty and it's made of wind and dreams and fantasy and, you know, flowers and ponies. It's like, great. Your building is not going to stand very tall for very long if there's a rainstorm. But if you go, my building is, is, is in shit and there's dirt all around it and it's fucking disgusting, chances are good when you put the foundation roots and the whatever building words I should use into the ground, it's going to stick because that's how buildings work. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Like you got to be real so that for, because from realness you can change, but from bullshit, you just get more bullshit. Well, and I also find, thank you. Cause I also find that from realness, you can actually draw, there's more, there's always more. It's like when you're making stuff up, when you're not actually being present to what is either for you or in that moment, like you run out of material 
But if you're always like present with what is, there is no shortage of material. Wow, that's cool. How does it get better than that? You just blew my mind right now, girl. You just blew my mind. It's right now leaking out of this ear. My mind is just <laughs> ripping out of this ear under my I just got this jacket, so you owe me $40 for this I'm on jacket. It. Hey, pal, I'm, I'm right there. <laughs> but that's, I mean, like, if I talk about that all that people are like, how do you create so much? And I'm like, I literally use every single moment of my day, every single epiphany, every single moment as a creation point. Hmm. There is nothing that I do or choose or am that isn't um, fodder for creation. And so I always tell people that are in a relationship with me, you got to get, <laughs> you're getting into a public relationship and you're fair game for creation. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because I, because it's like every single thing you never run out of material when you're willing to just be present with what you are. Wow, that's a really good point, and I and I, it, wow, that's it's a really good point. I can think of so many comedians. I can think of like the real geniusy ones who are like really rocking people's worlds. They're but they're always talking about like Jim Gaffigan does this bit about shampoo that is the most inane thing on the earth. And it is hilarious. Like I heard him do 20 minutes on shampoo live in a club in LA. <laughs> and the reason it's hilarious is because he's so present to every thought, feeling, and emotion and reaction and resistance and alignment and agreement he's having with the shampoo bottle. <laughs> he has so much to say about shampoo because he's right there. Wow. That's cool. Anyway, and then you think about like, you know, George Carlin and all the greats, they were, if you really look at what they're talking about, they're talking about nothing. You know, the Jerry Seinfeld show was about, it was a show about nothing. And hilarious. Was, and hilarious, because it was, a, what it really was about was about being present and making fun of all the weird shit that comes up every single second. Right. And I was just looking at that from the point of view of like, if we were actually willing to be that present with our awareness of every little thing, of every little nuance, every little possibility, like what would be possible to be create? I actually had a deeper thought than that, that they lost the words for it, but it was like, yeah, wow, that's just so cool. Like what if we were actually willing to be that present? Yeah. And like, yeah. And like, this brings me back to something Shannon said in, in Mumbai is she said, she, oh boy, this is going to be hard to articulate, but it was essentially like, if you were actually willing to receive yourself fully, Katie Rubin, like if you would receive to the, from the world around you, the table next to you, the air, the people, yourself, their judgments, their love, their hate, all of it. <laughs> what would happen then? And, and this brings me back to your earlier question, Crystal, about what is the writing process for me? And, and one thing that it tends to be over and over again is it forces me, writing forces me to be present. Mm. I always try to, to get flighty and write from the wind or avoid myself when I'm writing, but the, the page never sings when I'm not present. It never sings, but the time that the page jumps off the, of itself or the, the poem is elegant or the truth is articulated well, it's when I was willing to, for me to be in the solar plexus. I know that's very specific, but if I'm not in my solar plexus or my belly and expanded from there, mm -hmm. you know, conscious of the, this and conscious of this and with my solar plexus, I write a bunch of hooey that I end up erasing later anyway. Yeah, actually, and I think to, to circle back around to what I was trying to say was one of the, as I'm writing this business book, I'm finding that when I'm able to write it, it's because I've actually asked myself the question of what do I know about this that nobody else knows? And that's when I'm able to start looking at the energies that I'm aware of, and that's when the words show up. Right, right. And when I, that's exactly it, because when I get unstuck about my play that I'm writing right now, it's when I go, not what would be a great play? No. What scene would be great right now for the play that people will like? Yep. I have to go, what would be fun for me to say right now? For me to say? What would be fun for me to say? And the me is in here. It's in the body. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not present, I don't know what me wants to say. Yeah, and I found myself before this particular part of the process really going out, into, out there 
into the awareness of out there, you know, of what is, what is said about business, what will be exactly what you said, I'm saying the same thing, but it's like, what will be acceptable? What will people read? What will be a good access book? And as soon as I was willing to bring it in to my awareness of me and what I know, that's when it was like, blah, blah, blah. like I couldn't not like not talk anymore. You know, there was so much yeah. there that, that I just never asked for. That was always present, but I'd never asked for it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And a, a question that I like is I was, I, I was asked myself, like, if I was being me when yeah. I wrote this, what would I write? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting and, and like, when you look at acting, because it's like when you, you can't make choices in acting from somebody, what somebody else has made. You've got to make them from where they are, like, in that moment for you. For you. And yeah. that's when acting is believable and the, you, what you're doing is actually believable because it's believable to you. Like you're being, you're choosing, you're being yeah. what it is. Yeah. And it's funny because people say like, well, you pretend to be other people all the time. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I don't actually. What I do is I be me. This is like acting 101 is, is you be you in the circumstances of the play as if you were the person with the characteristics of the person in the play. Mm-hmm. They, Stanislavski calls it the magic if. He said, you act as if you were, I'm about to play, for example, this uh, body sassy maid in like a Moliere play that's all in verse, that's all like, everything rhymes. And it was rewritten by David Ives. And uh, I, you know, I have no frame of fucking reference for any of that shit. But like, what I know is what my, what I, shit, the character has a lot of attitude imagine imagine i wonder how you're gonna pull that off so i can like take a nap and do this show it's just stupid <laughs> but, uh, so it's like i i pretend like well how would i react if the king came into my bedroom and was like bitch do what i say i'd be like fuck you and then i translate the fuck you into the words that are written down in the play but the energy is the same so am i playing someone else not really although and here's where the paradox is and this relates to writing i really really think if you look at someone like Meryl Streep or someone like Kate Blanchett, like the ones who really transcend time and space and, do, and, and Helen Mirren, women, and these actors who just really transcend and make you go like, she's a different person. Who is she right now? There is an element of allowing your body and being to expand so much that you can pull from these other realms yeah. and, and sort of like embody something that is not of this fucking reality. And you're always going to be doing that through the system of your body. So you can't get away from you as you pull from other. So it's like, it can be the energy of both. Yes. Yeah. And I, I thank you. Well, one of the things Lisa Murray does on a lot of her calls is she brings in the energies of the multiverses and all of the other planets. Hmm. Not even something like ever would have occurred to me because I'm like being an infinite being is enough. That's enough. That's plenty. I don't need to ask for more. You know, like what? <laughs> what multiverse is the fuck? You know. Mm -hmm. But what I find that does is it allows me to have an, so much enough enough space. Mm. And I think that's what we do with ourselves as these little finite bodies of ours is we don't actually occupy and ask for enough space and 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 so that we can receive all of that other that is. Yep. whatever it is, you know? Yep. Yeah. The, the other day I had a writing session where I left it, you know how sometimes I'll have writing sessions where I leave it and I go, that was terribly uncomfortable and it sucked. And I wrote for 30 minutes. And yeah. Sucked and then other times I have sessions where I'm like, I was so in the zone that whole time. I was in the zone for three hours straight and I wrote from the zone for three hours. What's it going to take to recreate that every time? And I look very closely at what is the zone? Mm -hmm. Like what happening in the zone and and I think some of it is magic and we kind of can't encapsulate it or put words around it but some of it you really can like because what I've been noticing the zone is for me is like I just said it's this weird perfect blend of when I'm super embodied but super open and expanded beyond the body simultaneously and I'm I'm like riding this wave of consciousness that is you could say being channeled through me mm -hmm. but another way you could say it is like I am being the wave of consciousness I am flowing as it and I am articulating it as I witness it. That's when I love writing. I am articulating it as I witness it. That, yes. Right? So I wonder what questions we could even like come up with here that would create, like what questions could we ask that would create the zone? Mm. Right? Because it's like, what if you could actually ask for 
that, not that state, but that aware, that level of awareness, you know, what? I will tell you something I cheat with, and I wonder how this would contribute to us creating that question. Uh -huh. What I cheat with is music. Like if Me I play too. music, yeah, it, it like, mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> like just there, you know. And it, I actually pick the music based on the energy that I want to write from. Yes, me too. And so I think that my theory is because you know Gary says like don't play music during bars because you're gonna um, you're gonna uh, shut off the implants. I think that having the music play it shuts the implants off so you can enter the space of no judgments and no implants so you're operating from pure consciousness that's yeah it's just total awareness of like whatever that is. it's like awareness of the energy it's like the music matches the energy like you're aware of the energy you're like huh because i just end up looking i'll kind of look around the room as if i'm looking at something i'm looking at the energy it's like what is this energy what are the words that go with this like if i were going to really describe what this is what would i say mm, yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah. So, I mean, you could call it, a, it's like until I'm perfectly conscious and can be in the fucking awareness. You mean there? Until you're there? Until I'm arrived. We need to do a I show might... about there. What is there? Where is there? Oh, I wonder. Yeah, right? <laughs> we could put a really great kids book about that because if kids got, like, I could see it being like, where is there? Over there? I don't know. Underwear. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I know anyway. a couple of brilliant illustrators. Okay, back to the conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Does anybody have any questions? I think we might be sort of wrapping up unless you guys want to throw into on the conversation. Yeah, I really am wondering what people are wondering. What are we wondering? Come on, y'all have something to ask. Don't be all passive and shit. Come on now. <laughs> you got some weird lady in front of you. Take it. No, back. I really, I really appreciate this. The authentic you and the way you speak. I did that for years. I did that for years, and and uh, and then I quit because it seemed to. I I started listening to the judgments of others. But I abs I'm going to follow you just like a lamprey eel from hell. <laughs> It's like listening to myself talk 40 years ago, and I'm freaking loving it. Thank wow. you so much for this. Really taking me back, going back there. <laughs> get ready. Wow. How does it get better than that? Thank you for sharing that. That helps yeah. me. And, and I'm really good friends with Max. Maxine's fucking hilarious. Like, she's actually one of the funniest, aside from you, you guys are two of the funniest people I know. It, seriously. And, and this is the thing, like, with, I find with a lot of us that, are, that see the world with so much humor and so much, you can't have humor unless you're really fucking aware, because you see all the nuance, and that's what makes shit funny. It's like all the stuff nobody really talks about, but is totally present. And yeah. instead of going to expressing it as humor or writing about it, we tend to go to the, the dark hole of, like, nobody's like me, and I can't get out of this, and I, you know... Yeah the dark side, the, let's call it the dark side of that awareness as opposed to, wow, what's fucking really right about me that I'm not getting that energy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm, I just really want to express my gratitude to you for being you and for being out there and, and showing, I mean, cause that's what we all do when we're willing to be ourselves and just be as out there as we are, is we actually show people a different possibility. Yeah. Like, you can have all this awareness and all this humor and all this smarts and really create something with it. That's brilliant. Yeah. I, but thank you. The, the other night when I when I wrote that thing about going out for a walk in the dark. Yeah. And I had the most fun with that. And and at the end of it I thought, well, you better stop this because I don't think anybody's gonna get this. And at some point I went, Does anybody getting this? And you said you did. And I had like a freaking blast. I could I nearly walked into town and, and described even more dark things. But, <laughs> you know what? I really thought, and, and I showed it to, to a couple of people around here, and, and they looked at it and said, but you didn't write anything. And I said, no, I, I guess I didn't. But that's the thing, too, that I, I think for all of us, it's like we're not writing. One, we're not writing for anybody. We're writing for ourselves. And two, like, you're writing for the people that can receive you. That's it. One, you're writing for yourself, and two, like, Ask for it, like, if you do want more of an audience, if that's even a thing, like, ask for the fucking people that can receive you. You know, like, I'm, I cuss a lot in what I, you know, I do a lot of things that aren't really typical person stuff, facilitator stuff, coach stuff. I don't give a fuck, you know, because I want the people that are going to 
jive with me, vibe with me, want to be around me and, and learn from me are the people that that's going to speak to. And everybody else can fuck off in their own friendly way. Like, you know, and I don't mean that in a mean way. I just mean it like it's totally cool. Dude, I had a, another writing teacher friend who said she had a post-it by her computer, this is for Maxine too, that said, for those four people. Uh, because she had an awareness that there were always at least four people. That's awesome. Somewhere who would love this book. And she wrote, and she stuck that on her computer, and of course she's like famous and makes tons of money and everybody loves her shit, but she always thought she was writing for just those four people. So she wrote yeah. it for that. I think, I think Crystal and I may get into this tomorrow. I think in some perverse way, I show it to people because I know they won't get it. And I'll go, well, I knew you wouldn't get it. Fuck you anyway. I mean, there's, there's, some, uh, there's some kind of weird shit I got going. Yeah, cool. And I think we all got some weird yeah. shit. And it's like, yeah. you just, that's the cool, that's what awareness is for, is to actually go, oh, okay, I got weird shit. Well, we'll pop and pot all that tomorrow, you know? And it, there's always that. But I love that. Like, for those four people, like, if it didn't matter who was following you, who listened to you, who read your shit, like, what could you actually put out into the world? Yeah. Becky, did you have something? I'm really interested. Uh, well, I had a question because I've heard Gary and others talk about pulling the energy of the audience from the future where the book will be published. Mm -hmm. And um, it was interesting also to hear about Lisa Murray because I do that with the multiverses all the time. Um, I just kind of, that's just kind of where I live. And so I pull that and then pull the energy from the audience. And what I find is like there's, this editor that just won't fucking shut up and it's because it's the four people <laughs> the four people talking back to me right um or however many that is so i'm just curious if you do that if because i get writing for the sake of writing and i also get writing for the sake of publishing and so if you're pulling for the audience that's out there or pulling for the audience that will see the play or the show or whatever does anybody else have, I call it an editor and it's not even about judgment. It's just like, I can hear people talk to me or energy talk to me with either different words or different concepts. And, and what it does is just like now makes me go in a circle. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, is that working for you? Uh, not very well. Right. And so, you know, when it's happening, what other choices might you have? Like, could you choose to not listen to them? Or could you choose to return them to sender? Or could you choose to turn off your awareness of the multiverse for 10 minutes? Or I don't know. But what could you choose in that moment? Like, why are you letting yourself be a victim to these voices? And victim may be too strong a word, but like, why are you, why, who cares what they're saying? So in other words, what would it take for you to not be so affected by them? Quit asking them. Yeah, and I, I think there's, I mean, I think we all have these places, Becky, where it's like, it's all just different for all of us, where it can stop us. You know what I mean? Where, where whatever it is, so you're aware of all this, the future and the voices and the people, and I get that. I, I could perceive what you were saying as you were saying it. Um, it it's got to be like, okay, cool. So what contribution can this energy be to what I have to say and what do I have to say? That's like, it right there. Yeah. Because it's all just energies, and if we make it significant, voices, people, multi and make it significant, then it, it's, you know, it can stop us. But if you don't make it significant and it's just a contribution, then you still, it still comes down to, well, what would I like to say here? Yeah. That's, and and I, I don't know that it, it hasn't felt significant. I'm just aware that it, it's that there. I kind of feel like I'm in a gerbil wheel. Yeah. And what is because I, I would choose everything. I want the benefit of those and I want the, um, the ability to kind of. Yeah. Well, and so but there is one more thing in what you're saying that I want to address. So is there anywhere where you're trying to get it right for that audience? Of course. Well, everything that is for all of us, can we just try and create all that? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Because it's like when you're talking about the audience, there is a significance to them in that you're trying to write for them. But what, is that true or is that the lie that's sticking you? Feels like truth with a lie, actually. Okay, cool. So all that stuff, can we destroy and create all that? <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and I'm actually, I, I get what you're saying because there's time, like there are times when I go into like, I want to write for the people that are going to buy this book and make sure that I'm saying what they want to hear. 
But when I bring it back to like, okay, what is it that wants to be said through me? That's when I can actually write. And, and yeah. Well, I just got it as you were saying that, that yeah. it's me taking somebody else's point of view about how to write a marketable book. Right, right. Right. And that's what I was saying about, does that work for you yeah. as a way to write? When Gary Douglas says, I write for the future of blah, blah, blah. Does that work for you? Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, 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 it doesn't. It's paralyzing. Cool. And what I do is I keep the awareness of the future open as an energy. I don't close it ever. You know, I keep, they're all they're just energies. You know, if I go to conclusion about what it is, then it's not an energy anymore. It's a conclusion and that sticks to me. Right. Well, I was trying to figure out how to put it, how to express it. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I, which I don't. Yeah. Just aware of it. I don't normally try to. I don't normally try to put it into words. Maybe that is in fact the thing that chokes the writer. Maybe I, my, it maybe it would be a contribution to actually try to put it into words. Yeah, and maybe even start there when you're writing. Of like, okay, these four people are talking really loud today. What do they all have to say? Okay, you're done. Now yeah. what? You know. Of actually yeah. doing exactly what Katie talked about, giving him a voice, going, okay, what do you all have to say? Cool. And we're done with that. Now what? Right. And that may be your, your version of the list that yeah. that author was talking about of like, here's all the voices I'm hearing. And now what, can, what do I want to choose now that I've given them air for a moment? Like, what, what would I like to choose now? Rather than staying victimized to yeah. them wanting to talk, them wanting to talk, them wanting to talk. Well, I also just realized when you said that, that perhaps it's also as easy as just, um, you all need to be quiet. If I have a specific question, I'll ask. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Whatever works for you. It's, right. I find for me, like the writing thing, writing it down thing would work really well, but whatever works for you. It's just like whatever it takes to get to that point where you actually can write stuff down. Right. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank Thanks. You. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in on this vibrant party we got going on? I just want to say thank you. Cool. I just love, love the conversation and the deadline thing just really popped for me. It's like that's the only time I really do something. Yeah, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Awesome. Okay. I'm going. I'm going back on mute because I know I have a lot of background noise. Okay, cool. So much, and you guys are so fun together. <laughs> We've talked about that. We may, there might be something, something, something in the future. <laughs> as soon as she teaches me how to tell a joke, I'm going to be funny and get on camera. <laughs> One day when I'm funny. Uh, <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks, Cal. Um, I thank you, last person who said words. I really appreciate that. And I have to go. Okay, cool. Thank you. You guys, thanks so much for having me on. Crystal, obviously, thank you. And just thanks everybody yeah. for letting me say words. I hope they were a contribution mm -hmm. in some way. And I just, they were just awesome. Anybody who's trying to write anything, you're a writer. Cool. A writer. And you're in the Facebook group, Katie. So people might have questions for you. So check in. Okay, cool. Okay. See you. All thank right. you so Bye. much. Bye, Bye you guys. Me. We'll see you in the group. Happy writing. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.